Hey guys and welcome to Slasher X Games. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create a level editor. And I'm really excited about this tutorial because it's something I haven't actually done before. Once again I'm going to be bringing in the platform game mechanics and we're going to be using points and clicks similar to Game Maker's Room Editor to create a fantastic platform adventure map for our player. So if I go to create level, I've already put something together here. We've got our man, this is going to be our spawn point. We've got all these tiles, notice they snap to a grid. I've got tiles I can select over here to put them out in the game world and if I right click it destroys them. So these things at the bottom are going to be called my selectables and on the screen here on a global left pressed a draggable and draggables I can drag anywhere I can put them together like that and I can put something on top like that and I can make all kinds of fantastic looking objects. Very straightforward simple as that. So let's remove some of these things. I'm going to create, let's create another little hole over here, uh, like that. And we need an end piece. And actually, let's make an end piece like that. Remove that one, down piece like that. Just like that. Okay, cool. So the player's going to start, uh, let's put him up here. He's going to jump down. He's going to have to land on this little pillar and keep going. And this looks a little bit impossible. So let me put one of these down and one of these down like that. And then this one needs to be, let's see, what will work there? Not that one, perhaps this one. There we go, just like that, cool. And this thing I think has to be one of these, this one over here. And then let's put one of these down and one of these. And just like that. We've got a really cool looking game world right over there. Fantastic stuff. So now let's um, click save and when I save this it's going to be saving the game world as some sort of data structure and when we play game it loads that data structure right there for us. Very cool. And we can play it just like that. Awesome stuff. Okay guys, well let's jump straight into the code and I'm going to show you how you can create your very own level editor. Right, so here we are in somewhat of a bare bones basic project. We've got everything to do with platform mechanics. And what I've added to this is our play button. We've got our create button. This is the save room button. That's going to save whatever level we design. Then I've got a nice little divider here at the bottom. So we're going to display all our little selectables on that. We've got our selectables. 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 13, which is a little man. And the selectable selected is basically all those, but um, with a selected kind of outline on them. Now what I've done is I've gone into T-Set Ground and I've split these up into each block to represent the selectables, just like that. So you can see that's the left one, that's this one over here, that's the third one, that's the fourth one, and then it goes one down and such. So we must remember, that when I'm creating these again from the save, we're going to be creating tile sets and using some of the tile set generation functions and offsetting on this grid depending on which sprite or selectable is selected. Okay. Then our background looks quite nice and we've got the tile set obviously. The script right now is just platform mechanics. Our objects include the player, a the block that the player actually stands on. This is actually invisible. We've got our play button which um, is centered to the middle of the room on the x-axis. We've got the left press which takes us to the game world. In the create again it's centered. Our left press takes us to the create screen. Our save button over here that's going to take us to our main menu and in here before the main menu we're going to be saving the level that the player has designed. And the divider doesn't do anything, it is just going to be at the bottom of the room. So I'm going to open those up now. So main menu looks like this. We've just got play game, create level. The create screen looks like this. We've got the background there, we've got the divider at the bottom, and the save game button. And the world is right now just, uh, just blank. Nothing going on over there. Okay, first things first. Let's create object selectable. Uh, we don't need to give it a sprite now, that's going to be assigned dynamically. I'm going to have to have a create event, image speed equals zero, because we're going to be giving it 
a sprite that contains multiple sub-images, we want to make sure that that speed is set to zero. On left pressed, grab some code, it's going to say, well, with all other object selectables, their sprite index is going to be sprite selectable, not sprite selectable uh, selected, and this one is going to say its sprite index is that of SPR selectable selected. Now also, I'm going to create a variable called global.selected. That's going to keep track of which sub-image is selected, so that when the user does that global left press on the game world or in the open space, it's going to know which draggable to create. I'm going to set that to the image index. All right, so let's go ahead and um, create a number of these selectables in our create room. So open that up. Creation code. Now I did some calculations earlier. Let's create two variables here. yy and xx. Let's actually put xx before yy. 150, one, uh, 15665. So if we hover over here, let's look for 15665. So that's going to start about over here. 150 and 665. There. Okay, so it's going to start around here and it's going to be moving to the right, generating with every iteration of that for loop one selectable. So back in here, I'm going to say place selectables for var i equals zero. i is less than, and let's see, less than what? How many selectables do we have? 14. Okay, so I'm going to say it's less than 14 because this goes up to 13 there. Okay, so i is less than 14, i++, plus plus, and I'm going to say with instance create. I'm going to put it at x, x, and y, y. I'm going to create an instance of object selectable. It's got the with construct here. I need another bracket. Well, we want the first one to be selected. So if i equals 0, then the sprite index of this one is SPR selectable selected. Otherwise, it's of type sprite index equals SPR selectable. Okay, so these ones will be deselected. Also, the image index is going to be that of I. 0 to 13, so that's going to say, well, the first one's going to be this piece of terrain, the next, and so on, all the way up to number 13, which is going to be the spawn spot selectable. And at the end of this width, I'm going to increase the x, x value by 110 pixels. Gives it a bit of space. It's also the uh, greater than the width of one of these selectables right over there. These are 64. And it fills the screen quite nicely. Cool beans. Now that that's sorted, it means that on creation, we're going to see all these selectables at the bottom. And the user can actually click one of them because of this code over here to select one. So now that that's sorted, we need to handle what happens if the user left clicks somewhere on the screen here. We need to create something called a draggable. So here we go. Object draggable. Again, image speed is equal to zero. I'm going to be putting in my drag logic here. So grab equals false, xx equals zero, yy equals zero, initialize some of those variables. Step event, if grabbed, then x equals mouse x plus x, x, y equals mouse y plus y, y. And we're going to say move snap, set that to 64 pixels. If you don't know anything about dragging and snapping to a grid, please check out the tutorial in the description of this video, which was one of my previous ones where I go through all of this fantastic magic in finer detail. So that's the step event. Now let's grab these x, x, and y, y's. That's actually the relative click position between the X coordinate and the mouse X and the Y coordinate and the mouse Y. So that's in the add mouse left pressed. 
grabbed equals true. So we're clicking on it now. Depth minus one just for fun. The relative click position of the X is equal to X minus mice mouse X. Y Y is equal to Y minus mouse Y. Cool stuff. So that's going to update the X and Y. And the step event is actually going to move it. Now also let's go and do the right pressed. I'm going to say instance destroy. Just like in the room editor of GameMaker uh, Studio. If you right click it's going to destroy one of the uh, draggables or the tiles that we're putting out. And then left released. Grab equals false. Depth back to zero. And that is that. Okay, let's save that. Okay, how are we going to be creating these? Uh, these draggables? We need some sort of controller. And this is going to live in our uh, level editor. Has no sprite. Let's add a create. This is where we're going to initialize that global selected variable. Set it to zero. Then now because we're not clicking on the controller itself, we're just clicking somewhere in space. That's what we call a global mouse event. And it's going to be a left pressed. So I want to say, well, I don't want to be placing anything below that divider of ours. If mouse y plus 70 pixels is less than object divider dot y if not collision uh, point mouse x mouse y object draggable zero false false for not me so so long as we aren't clicking on another draggable and we need another bracket then with instance create at the mouse x and mouse y I'm going to create an object draggable And I'm going to say its image index is equal to that of global dot selected and grabbed equals true. Just like that. So you can click and drag and it will create one just like that. So let's go back to our draggable to make sure that this variable is called grabbed. 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 Okay, awesome. Let's go ahead to our room create. Let's add that controller before we forget. Let's put it somewhere like there. Top left, that's good. All right, so at this point in time, we have put everything together that builds the scene. We have our rooms, we have our buttons, we have our tiles, our selectables, our draggables, when we create these draggables, but we're not saving and or loading anything that happens. So let's power this up. I just wanna make sure everything works up to this point and then we'll take it from there. All right, so let's test this out and see what we've got so far. In the create level, notice we've got the selectables at the bottom of the screen. We can select each one. And if we click somewhere in the game world, we can create that type of terrain. Let's look like that. We can build up our scene using these blocks. And it gives the user the power to create any kind of room that he would possibly want. And we can also drag these into new positions if we so choose, we can place our man right at the top. Yay, he says he has done it. He's created a level. Okay, so right now this doesn't really do much. If I click save and I click create, it's not loaded, it's not saved, nothing is doing anything. We're just giving the user the tools he needs to create his level. In our next part, I'm going to be showing you how you can save these levels, how you can load these levels, and how the user can actually go into the game world and play his levels. So that about wraps up part one of this level editor. Hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If there's anything you want in this mini-series, now is the time to put it down in the comments. I'm looking forward to that. Maybe we can even stretch this out if you have created or attempted to create a level editor in the past but just couldn't get it right. Now is the time to ask me those questions. That could catapult your project into the next level. If you like this video as well as many of my other tutorials, 
I invite you to check out my Patreon campaign. Remember, $4 patrons get access to Game Maker Studio 2 files with every Game Maker Studio tutorial that I release. You can also follow me on various social media networks, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, things like that. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you then.